This is a real life owner's review of our old English Sheepdog Molly. How you doing guys? Chad here. This is Molly here guys. She's an old English Sheepdog. She's my best gal and she's 18 months old. She's the best dog I ever had and today I thought I'd give you my review on this dog. A type of owner's review. I do a lot of reviews on equipment and whatnot. I thought I'd do an owner's review on my old English Sheepdog. So stay tuned and we'll get right into the video. I know there's a lot of people out there that are thinking about getting an old English sheepdog as a family pet. And let me tell you folks, they are amazing dogs. Amazing. So if this video can help anybody change their mind to narrow down their search for what breed of a dog they want to get, whether it be for your family, whether it be for yourself, whether it be for your farm, these dogs are the best. And I can attest to that because I've had this dog for almost two years and she's the best dog I've ever had in my whole life. And that's saying something. Hidden Spring Farm is a 90 acre farm stay and experience in Horseshoe Valley, Ontario, Canada. And Molly, our old English sheepdog, was born and bred right here in Ontario. Behind me here, this is our ducky bunkie and we have a whole bunch of khaki Campbell ducks. This is our octagonal chicken house, the Chalet du Poulet. We have a barn there. We have the farmhouse, which is where the guests stay. I have a workshop. We're a farm stay here, which means we're like a farm, an operating farm, and a vacation rental at the same time. We got a whole bunch of chickens living in this chicken house, and they're loving life in their new coop. Now I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about having a sheepdog. And it's not all good. I can tell you that right up front. I'm going to tell you a lot of the great things. And I can tell you the bad things also. Just so that you're aware of what you're getting into when you get a sheepdog. We have a whole bunch of barn cats here at the farm. And they take care of our rodent problems. And they do a great job. But that brings me to my first point about Old English sheepdogs. Is that they are so great with other animals. And I am speaking in generalities here, folks. Every single dog requires the proper training. And I'd like to think that we gave Molly here the proper training when she was a young pup to interact with the cats when they were kittens, to interact with the ducks when they were ducklings, to interact with the chickens when they were chicks. And I introduced them and I exposed them to each other and they live every day with at least a little bit of contact. And then after a while, they're best friends. Now sheepdogs have a double coat and they don't have fur, they have hair. And it's very profuse, very thick. There's this outer hair right here, which is very fine, a little bit wiry. But when you dig a bit further, there's an inner coat and this is what keeps her warm. She's happy just staying outside. She gets covered in snow, she gets covered in muck. She's, <laughs> she doesn't mind at all. She wants to be outside in the cold weather. You can keep them in a warm climate, but you're gonna have to keep them severely trimmed. You won't be able to keep them looking all shaggy the way Molly is right now. She's looking extra shaggy, yeah. Now 
Now here's a couple of quick hits about Old English Sheepdogs. One, they don't shed. Two, they don't drool. The only time I see Molly drooling is when I'm ready to give her a treat and she's like, ah, 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 and she's like salivating because she wants that treat. And the only time I ever see hair falling out is when she's scratching and then a little bit of hair comes out or it just falls out naturally because it's dead hair, just like us humans just falls out naturally. But they don't shed their coat in the spring. None of that. You don't have to deal with that at all. These dogs are very loyal, guys very loyal they always want to be by your side they're great companions molly's really my best friend she goes wherever i go whether i'm at the farm she follows me around the farm wherever i go or if i'm going somewhere in the car or if i'm going to pick up supplies she's always in the back seat of my car she loves rides she never gives me any problem she doesn't get nauseous when she's in the car She's really great that way. But that being said, guys, even though I'm saying they're super loyal dogs, it also can bring a couple other issues. Like for example, if I disappear for half a day without Molly and then I come home, she just wants to kiss and hug me and attack me and, and love on me for like 20 minutes because she misses me so much. So because they're so loyal, it's very difficult to have any free time for yourself. If I'm editing these YouTube videos, she's lying down there beside my desk. If I'm watching a movie on my TV, she's right there acting as my footstool. You know, if I'm eating some snacks, she's right there. She wants some snacks. So there is a little bit of separation anxiety with these dogs because they love their owners so much. They do. They really do. They always want to be by your side. That can be good, but it can also be a little difficult because you got to get yourself a little personal time, you know? And these dogs can take up all your time. Now these dogs are classified as a working dog. They're actually a herding dog. They're a herding breed. And they do have herding tendencies and natural instincts. And they're also used as livestock guardian dogs. They just live out in the field with the sheep and then their coat gets really shaggy with the sheep and then when the spring comes around they just shear the hair off of the sheepdog at the same time that they're shearing the wool off the sheep and that basically identified them as being working dogs like working on a farm for example historically these old english sheepdogs had docked tails it was for tax purposes to show that the dog is actually working as opposed to being a pet now it is a fact that most countries everywhere around the world have already banned the practice of docking tails, but not here in Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada, the breed standard for Old English Sheepdog is to have a docked tail, hence their nickname of old, a bobtail. So now again, that being said, because they are a herding dog, because they have natural instincts, to herd animals, people, cars, whatever, they wanna herd you. They'll cut right in front of you and circle around and try to guide you in a certain direction. Because of that, they like to nip at the ankles or the bottom of the legs because that's what they were bred to do with the sheep, you know, nip. They just at the bottom of the feet to get the sheep to get moving. You have to be aware when you get these dogs, as long as you're not using it for herding, you have to be really precise in your training at a young age to really stop that nipping and stop the herding tendencies. And really, there's no easy answer on how to do that. You just have to really emphasize the using the word no. I use the word no a lot with Molly. And once she understood what no meant, now I say no for everything and she's very good. If she's eating the cat food and I say, Molly, no, then she just stops eating the cat food because she understands what no means. So Molly no longer nips, any, any kind of little biting, and she no longer herds me, although she still herds the vehicles, but she doesn't herd people at least. Now because they're a working dog, these dogs don't like rest time. They always feel the need to be busy. They always want to work. And what that means, folks, is that they need a lot of exercise. They need to be out and about. Now Molly here, she's living the time of her life here at the farm. She's not kept in a fenced area. She's not kept in a kennel. She's free to roam around wherever she wants. She's always running around playing. She's loving life at the farm. She's free. She's strong. She's muscular. 
She's not a fat dog by any means. She's very athletic for an old English sheepdog. So you better be aware of that. If you're thinking on the old English sheepdog breed, they need exercise. You can't just keep them locked up in an apartment. You know, they'll survive in an apartment, but you're going to have to give them, you know, a daily walk, like a nice walk in the morning, a nice walk in the evening. And then that way, when you come home from work, you, you get exercise yourself. Now, these dogs are very cuddly. You know, they love to be hugged. They're like giant panda bears. When they're young pups, they're traditionally white and black. But as they grow older, you can see that the black hair now has turned gray. This is all gray down here, but it's a beautiful gray. Now the Old English Sheepdog is not a very popular breed. They have been marked by the kennel societies that they're a breed in decline. So anything that we can do to help this dog, to breed this dog, to get them as pets, to get them as farm dogs, we need to do it. You know, we need to bring their numbers up. But because they're rare, they are the absolute center of attraction wherever you go. I mean, wherever I go at least, people are always asking me what breed it is. They're always asking me, can I pet her? Is she nice? Does she bite? So people are not so familiar with old English sheepdogs, but they can see that she is such a cute dog. So everywhere we go, whether we're walking down the sidewalk, whether we're shopping at Home Depot, she's the center of attraction and people wanna come up to her and pet her. She's a star. She's a star! Old English Sheepdogs, I find, in my opinion, since having Molly for almost two years now, they're very intelligent, you know? I know that they're not marked very high on the dog intelligence list. They're way down at the bottom of the list. So a lot of people just assume that they're dumb dogs, but I don't find that the case at all. This dog is very, very smart. And she also shows a lot of human-like qualities. And what I mean by that is, you know, she shows empathy, she shows remorse. You know, if, if, you're, if you're scolding her, she'll come over and apologize. Um, she understands names. So if my wife says to her, hey, Molly, you love mama? You love mama? She comes over, you know, she kind of wants to give mama a hug because she knows that that's mama. She shows happiness, she shows sadness, she shows depression. When she's getting in trouble, you know, she just puts her head down so she knows that she's getting in trouble. Things like that, that tell me that she really understands what's going on. She likes to play games. She's pretty much a clown. She's like a comedian, you know. She's a comedian. She's always trying to make us laugh. Now Molly here, at 17 months of age, she's 84 pounds. So the average for sheepdogs is in between 80 and 120 pounds. And of course, depending on whether or not the dog is a male or a female, males will be much larger and I'll have a lot more muscle mass. Probably the best feature of this breed is their personality. They have such a huge personality. I cannot stress that enough, that their personality is what makes them far and above one of the better dogs to keep as a family dog or a farm dog. She's just amazing. She's so lovable. She's so big hearted, very sweet natured. And I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. I just love her. These dogs are also fairly healthy dogs, guys. They don't have a huge amount of problems. And as long as you're getting your pup from a really reputable breeder, they've been selectively breeding out as much health problems as they can. The typical lifespan of an Old English Sheepdog is 10 to 12 years, but there's been Old English Sheepdogs that live up to 17 years. As long as they have a healthy lifestyle, as long as they get a lot of good nutrition through their life, and if they have good genes, they can do well in their life. One of the things you got to pay attention to though is hip dysplasia. Now this is a very common problem in almost all breed of dogs but you got to pay attention to that hip dysplasia. You know try to catch it early enough if it's you if you think it's going to be a problem in your pup's life. <laughs> Thank you.
shouldn't have any problem start training these pups at eight weeks of age we started training molly at nine weeks of age but there shouldn't be any trouble at all they're very bright molly learned how to sit she learned her name molly she learned how to come she learned all that in one day now if you live in a cold climate where it snows you have to be aware that sheepdogs, because of the long hair, will develop snow clumps and snowballs on the bottom of their legs and their feet, in between their toes and everything. So you have to be aware. Our solution so far with these snow clumps, we, uh, we tried these boots and she pretty much wrecked the boots in a matter of a week. My wife had to stitch them together. Then we tried a different brand of boots. They've held up a little bit. Um, but they don't stay on properly, and I think it makes her a little uncomfortable. And the other thing we do is we really trim all of the hair all the way up her legs and around her feet so that when we get home, it's just towel dry, you pat it down, dry the feet, and she just takes a little bit of air drying and then she's good to go. Otherwise, it's gonna be a problem for inside your house when all these snowballs melt. Now, let's get down to the brass tacks about keeping an old English sheepdog when it comes to grooming, guys. Grooming? Now, it's no secret that the Old English Sheepdog is a shaggy, hairy dog. Therefore, it requires a lot of brushing. Now, if you don't brush them accordingly and regularly, they can get matting. And matting is when there's big chunks of hair that basically get knotted and tangled. And then there's nothing much you can do at that point apart from shaver. Now we had to shave Molly last spring. My wife and I did it ourselves, and it wasn't a fun ordeal, but I do believe that Molly was very relieved after it was done. She was running around playing even more than usual. So unfortunately, if mats develop, they're very difficult to get out and you really gotta stay on top of that brushing. And if you can't do it yourself, then you gotta get her really to a groomer on a regular schedule. Now all the regular grooming stuff, it's the same as any other dog. You know, you bathe them, you know, every once in a while. We bathe Molly every couple of months and they got nails, you know, they have to trim down the nails, things like that, you know, brushing their teeth once in a while. That's all regular maintenance when it comes to a dog. Now, if you look very closely at her eye there, there's this eye gunk that builds up. And you really have to remove that eye gunk because it builds up, it builds up. Us humans, we have that too. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you have the morning stars in the corner of your eye, the sheepdogs have that too. Now let's just talk some good, bad, and ugly for a minute. Because sheepdogs are so hairy, there can be some issues hygienic wise. <laughs> and nobody really likes to talk about it. This is a real life owner's review. And because this is a real life review, I'm gonna tell you a couple of nasty issues that can develop with Old English Sheepdogs. One, they get poopy butt. <laughs> and I'm not gonna show you any details, but basically if they're constipated and they're trying to poop and the poop is not coming out properly, it gets tangled in the long hair and you really have to keep the hair trimmed around the butthole and that's just the way it is with long-haired dogs it's not just sheep dogs there's lots of long-haired dogs that have this issue but if you let it go and let the hair go and let the hair go and then all of a sudden she has a big poop and it gets stuck in there it is a serious nasty problem it's time for the rubber gloves treatment and the other thing too is of course the opposite of a constipation is a diarrhea and if she gets a diarrhea then it runs down the hair and it, it's pretty nasty but that's all I'm gonna talk about that but I just wanted you to be aware when it comes to cost 
I believe I paid 3,000 Canadian dollars for Molly, and she is from a top-notch breeder here in Ontario. From a reputable breeder, you're probably looking anywhere in between two and four thousand dollars. And I'm talking Canadian dollars here. I mean, depending on where you are in the world, you'll have to figure that out and do your own research. But they are expensive dogs. They're purebreds. You can't put a price on happiness, guys. One more thing that I find with our Old English Sheepdog Molly is that she can be very clumsy at times. And it's not the fact that she's a clumsy dog, but the problem is the shaggy hair covers her eyes and she does bang into things when she's going up and down stairs. Sometimes she misjudges the distance between her and the stairs or she bangs into the coffee table, things like that. So what my wife does is she keeps the hair around her eyes trimmed so that she always has a clear vision. But with all that good, bad and the ugly, she's my best gal. She's my best friend. I love her a whole lot. And I wouldn't trade her for anything here on the farm. I hope to be able to get into breeding at some point in the future. But it won't be with Molly because she's already spayed. That was part of the agreement from the breeder. She has a non-breeding contract. She's the best dog I've ever had. I love her a lot. I'm happy that she's living a great life here on the farm. I don't mind that there's a little bit of extra brushing. I really like the shaggy look. Look at this face! Look at this face! <laughs> <laughs> solid. She's a solid dog. Look, she's solid muscle because she's always running around here on the farm. She's like a weightlifter. Anyways, guys, I really do appreciate you watching this video. I don't believe that there's any video on YouTube from an experienced owner about keeping an old English sheepdog. There's a lot of videos out there, but they're all just some guy talking in the background and then they show a whole bunch of clips from the internet. They're not really Old English Sheepdog owners themselves. I can tell you, everything that we talked about today is experience from me. And it's no word of a lie, I'm not making anything up. It's a true, true, honest review of keeping an Old English Sheepdog. But I really do appreciate you watching. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to pound that like for me, please. Click the like button. It really helps with YouTube recommending our videos. And if you really want to see Molly grow up on the farm, day-to-day -day activities on the farm, farm vlogs, equipment reviews, firewood stuff, chainsaw stuff, farm say stuff, we have geese, we have chickens, we have ducks, we're hoping to get a whole slew of more animals in the future to make the farm stay more attractive to our guests. We're talking about gardening. We're talking about hugel culture, built duck houses. We built chicken houses. We do a whole lot of sheepdog stuff and we'd really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Molly would appreciate it too. High five, high five. Yeah, high five, high five, yeah. Down, lie down, lie down. Good girl, good girl.